want the hundreds with the blues in it. Even blood across it where the blood dinner. Just stay turned like the you know. I've been through that water like the Olympic swimmers. Only bread and butter what we ate for dinner. So I had to dream it to the dream is bigger. Only want the gold, we don't need the silver. Gotta be number one, number two, never count. Used to have bubble guts competition, now pouring them out. Making my babies proud, wanna cop my mama a house. Coming straight out the south, got enough juice to end the drought. Yeah. I buy like, I buy like 23, 23. Won't fall again and I put that on me. Yeah. I feel the way my heart all on my sleeve. Yeah. That's why I had to put my wrist on freeze. Come follow me, can't take another L. Designer on me, this that new Chanel. Did that splash, did that drill. Yeah, yeah, champion, huh? Yeah, we here. Reaching my goals, I do not feel a shame. I'm a dog, I'm a beast, and I cannot be tamed. I don't do it for fame, it's the love for the game. I go in like I'm trained. I'm prepared for the rain, they amaze. I ain't break from We are pleased, as always, to be bringing you coverage of the National Football League on EA Sports. The scene a few moments ago, here it is. It's unlike any other in sport as both teams made their way out of the tunnel. These folks are fired up as their guys are ready to do battle between the Minnesota Vikings and our home team. The bye weeks are over. It's all about football all the time as we're underway here in week 13. Taken about seven yards deep. And no chance to get away as they'll get him down at about the 17-yard line. First and 10 at their own 17-yard line. So from the 17 now, here's a first and 10. A first carry for Leonard Fournette. Only a couple for him there on the game's first play, and it's second down. Certainly a nice job there by the defense rallying to the football and getting him on the ground, but I think the play gets made by the defensive front because if they can't get upfield, their job is to go ahead and get low, almost get into a ball sometimes, stack things up, and make it difficult for the runner to find a hole. The last run good for two. Here's second and eight. Now back to throw. Got a man, and he hits him in stride. And he'll go down at the 26, following a gain of six. Six yards is the pickup, and that'll lead to a third down. Charles, Thursday night game, I think a lot of teams probably say shrink the playbook somewhat. Is that correct? I think you're right about that, because you just don't have the amount of time that you have in a normal week to put in a full playbook. So as you said, you shrink the playbook, Pick out the plays that work best for you. And you know what else you're looking for? What's that? Who are the freshest guys coming off of the last game to play on a Thursday night? Guys have a little extra pep in their step. You go to them early and often. He'll have a first down past the 40. And he's going to get this into enemy territory at the 45. It was third and short, and they go flying past the marker for a gain of nearly 30 yards. At the 45-yard line. Viking territory now. They'll come up first and 10 at the 45 yard line. and 10 at the 35-yard line.
From the gun, it's Hurts. Eluding the pressure right. That's out to his running back, Fournette. Give him 10 yards on the pickup, and that'll make it second and a foot or so. Nice methodical opening drive here. They're already in the field goal range. They're in a good spot. You know that people like to take a shot in this part of the field. But at the same time, as methodical as they've been, they might want to run the ball a little bit here, too. And just on the outskirts of the red zone, they have options now. Either way, though, they've come out with a purpose. And they'll be inside the 25 now at the 24. A gain of just a yard, but it's a first down. You were telling me this yesterday. That's exactly what they want to do on the opening drive, establish the ground game. Yeah, remember our conversation. We were talking about what one of the GMs in the league has told me repeatedly. It's a big man's game, and it's not necessarily size. He's talking about playing some big boy football. Line up, get leverage, knock people back, and establish the run early. Off the play fake, he'll look to throw. And he's going to be taken down here. A sack back at the 32. Ben Gideon. It'll go as a loss of about eight as he gets in there to drop him. So that complicates things a bit here. 18 yards to go now on second down. Throwing from the gun, it's Hurts. And this is caught at the 8. And he'll head out of bounds inside the 10. Mark it down at the 9. That one goes for 24 yards. Ten goal at the 9-yard line. Terrific opening drive has them knocking on the door. First and goal. And the Lions are going to have a first and goal coming up as he's out of bounds at the two. The impressive opening drive continues and just space being created by those guys up front. We're seeing this the same way, aren't we? We are seeing an offensive line as this game gets started, as it starts to unfold, that they are dominating the line of scrimmage. From the two now, second and goal. They'll try to punch it in with Fournette. And he's going to take it in for a Lion touchdown. Leonard Fournette, his 11th touchdown of the year. And the Lions take it right down and score on the opening drive. It's up, it's good, and the Lions lead 7-0. Makes the score Lions 7, Vikings nothing. Joey Sly is set to kick off. Joey Sly now to kick off after the touchdown. Fielded a couple yards into the end zone. And they'll get him down right at the 25-yard line. So the same result had he opted for the touchback. 25-yard line. and 10 and kind of tipping their hand at running the ball. Three tight ends are out there. The play action fake. They'll look to throw. Steps away to his left. He's going to take off with it. Give him 10 that time escaping the danger, running with it and picking up a first down. Partner, he was going through his progressions. Not there, not there. After about the third one, he decided he better pull it down and run for it. And he slides down and avoids the hit for good measure. The first carry now for Dalvin Cook. It's a six-yard gain on the ground, and that'll make it second and four. Defensively here, you're facing a top-five team in terms of points scored in the NFL, so when they're that high power, you've got to find a way to hold them under 20, because to me, that's the magic number. 
20-point score gives yourself your, you give yourself your best chance to win. So if they're up around 24, 28, 30, they could be in some trouble. I think so because then you turn it into a shootout, and that means your offense has to keep pace. And that will be incomplete. Try to dial up the long one way out there, but it'll be third down. But they certainly came out firing in this one, and while that one was incomplete, I can't imagine that'll be the last shot that they take in this game. Back to throw here. And he's got his man in stride, complete. And he'll go down, but not before getting this inside the 30. That's a first down and then some, a 32-yard pickup. First down, Minnesota. From the shotgun, he'll look to throw. And that's going to be incomplete. Too tough to hold on to that one. It's second down. But when you're going up against a talented receiver like that, you just know that they're going to bring more people to him, right? They've got to double cover him every chance they get. I think that that is what we're going to see all game long, an early taste of that double, maybe even sometimes triple coverage we might see. Yeah, I think what they're counting on, his talent to sometimes beat that double coverage. And yeah, able to break one tackle, but then quickly brought down. But a nice little game. They get six. That'll leave them with third and four. Third down. They'll look to throw again. And that's going to be incomplete. The coverage too good there. The contact popped the ball free, and it's fourth down. It's now fourth down. Eddie Pinheiro on now. It's a 39-yard attempt, right hash. A 39-yard. This is up and good from Pinheiro. And they are on the board, but still trailing. It's 7-3. to three. So, yes, it's only three, but at least they're able to answer back after giving up the touchdown to start the game. Yeah, I like the observation there because getting some points on the board, very positive for them. Feel a little bit better about things because if you don't score... You potentially open the door for them to score again, and then you're down 14. After 1-7-3, the score on EA Sports. Vikings 3. The Lions offense ready to kick off their next drive. They had the touchdown on the opening drive of the ball game. It was countered by just a field goal. So, hey, if your guys can do that for four quarters, you're in good shape. Yeah, it is a team game, so that's just good complimentary football. But, you know, I know I'm no brainiac, but you trade sixes for threes, things are going to work out in your favor. They'll come out throwing here on first down. That's to his running back, carry on Johnson. And he's got it past the 30 before he's hit and dropped. First play of the drive going for 14 and also going for a first down. First and 10 at the 32-yard line. Now Leonard Fournette. And able to break one tackle, but then quickly brought down. But a nice little game. It's a six-yard pickup, but it gets them to second and four. Offensive linemen love creating space for their guys carrying the ball. But when that guy also breaks tackles and creates extra yardage, they almost feel like he's one of them, and they really embrace him. The last run got six, now second and four. Stepping up, he's going to keep it. And this will wind up a Lions first down as he's got this up to the 45-yard line. Partner, those are back-to-back -back six yard runs and if they're gonna continue to get those types of plays Shoot you just keep running the same stuff. Don't you? Yeah, it was first and ten and second and four now first and ten again Second and nine. Well, sometimes you just have to give credit to the defense. Great job there at the point of attack, holding up. They won their battles at the line of scrimmage, left him no space to try and run. Really nice job swarming to the ball carrier. 
Hurts, he's going to keep this on the option. He's got the first down and more inside the 40. A gain there of 21 yards. Well, I tell you, there is no antidote for speed, even at the quarterback position, as he keeps it himself and turns it into good yardage. And it still takes time for a defender to react, even as quarterbacks carry the ball more and more in today's NFL. They're still a little bit in disbelief and realize, oh my goodness, he's running with the ball. He may be 8, 10, 12 yards downfield at that point. Two yards on the pickup there. It'll be second and eight. Well, any lane that might have been open there was closed pretty quickly, and that was because the defensive front, they won that battle at the point of attack at the line of scrimmage. They used great leverage, held their spot, and stacked him up. And that'll be incomplete. Looked took a pretty good shot as he tried to pull that one in. Couldn't hang on third down. Well, that one was all about the defender making life difficult for the receiver. Very tough for a guy to hold on to the football through all that contact. He ends up forcing the incompletion. They need to get this to the 24 on third down. Now they'll throw here out of the gun. Got his man. That's Harry. And he's going to be out down inside the 20 at the 15. His first catch, and it's a pretty big one. They get the conversion on third down. Line of scrimmage, the 15. It's first and 10. backwards here losing yardage back to the 16 he was unable to shake free there and they'll cover him for a loss of a yard brings up second and 11 at the 16 yard line Maybe just a slight detour on what's been a strong drive. Here's second and 11. Here's a play fake as they set up to throw. A throw for Gomerday is going to be intercepted. Picked by Jeff Gladney. Charles, not only is that an interception, it's one when you were really knocking on the door for a touchdown inside the red zone. You're actually thinking points no matter what. At worst, you're thinking kicking a field goal and getting three. We might look back on this in the second half and say, you remember when they didn't get points on that drive? This could cost them. to throw now in his own end zone. He's going to get this one down to Cook. And they'll get him down up past the 15. They were looking for a little spark and some breathing room. They got it right there. A gain of 14 and a first down. Looking to throw. Flushed out right. And seeing no options, he just tosses this one away incomplete. Now that'll bring up second down. To this point, I've been impressed with the work defensively. They have not allowed a lot of receivers to run free. And there's another example, another incompletion. On play action, they'll throw. This time for Smith, and it's intercepted. Adrian Amos with a pick. And they're going to be set up in the red zone at the 15. CD, I know it's just his second year in the league as a quarterback, but that's going to be one when he flips on the tape. He's like, ah, I shouldn't have thrown that ball. No doubt about it, and his coaching staff will be emphatic about he shouldn't have thrown that ball. But remember, second year, as you noted, on the job training, so he's got to take this feedback that he's getting, negative or otherwise, and turn it into positives moving forward. And to put it mildly, this is a tough spot defensively. They have to come right back out and defend their red zone. But how about that good first step towards forcing them to settle for at least three points? I think they're also thinking bigger right now. Imagine being able to stop them totally 
and change the momentum. And yet again, he stopped behind the line of scrimmage. Great job by this Vikings defense. The Vikings going to signal for the first of their timeouts. They'll have two remaining as we step aside here in this second quarter. time he'll look to throw and he'll find Galladay that's complete and all the way to the two yard line there before crossing over out of bounds they're able to convert on third down and that sets up a first and goal first and goal at the two yard line two minutes to play in this first half 7-3 our score Coming up at the half, a reminder, we go back to Orlando to check in with Jonathan Coachman. He'll have a look back at our first half as well as a look ahead. And he takes this one in for a Lions touchdown. Leonard Fournette, his second touchdown of the game, giving him 12 on the season. And the Lions add on to their lead. And this one's right through to make it a 14-3 ball game. Makes the score Lions 14, Vikings 3. Joey Sly is set to kick off. Joey Sly now to kick off after the touchdown. And down he goes just shy of the 25. Now a penalty marker is down. Let's see what that's about. Well, that holding call set him up with not great field position. Not at all when you tack on the penalty. But that field position after the return wasn't terrific. It's not a great starting field position as well. Now a first and 10 at the 11. They'll set up to throw. They'll go in for Jefferson downfield. Into a double team and it's intercepted. He's picked off just shy of midfield. Second straight drive now here, Charles, that have ended with an interception. And I just wonder, because I don't think it's going to rattle him necessarily, but I also wonder if it's going to unnerve him a little bit. Does it lead to another one, or does he find a way to pull it together and become sharp again? Fournette, a first down carry. Just a yard on the pickup there, and it'll bring up a second and nine. No doubt about it. A really nice job there by the defense, not allowing him to get to the perimeter. But that means your defensive ends, your outside linebackers, the guys that you pay big money to to sack the quarterback, they also have to have interest in the running game as well. And they did a nice job there of holding the point of attack and not giving ground. And they'll get this to the 30-yard line before crossing over out of bounds. That one good for a first down pickup of 18 yards. Pretty ideal right there. Keep it yourself, get the first down, and get the heck out of bounds. And knowing him, I believe he's thinking, I can get a few more yards if I just lower my shoulder. But he also hears that second voice in his head. His head coach, or probably his agent too, saying, get out of bounds, man. Don't do that. And he will cross the 30 down to the 29-yard line. Two yards the gain on the keeper, and it's second down. And eight at the 20. Creeping up on a minute to play in this first half. Now it's the backup, Mariota. Got a man open. That's Harry. Six yards is the pickup, and that'll lead to a third down. One thing you're hoping for when you run drag routes, you're able to hit a receiver in stride, and he can pick up a lot of yardage after the catch. But in this situation, the defense was effective, able to stop him before he could get a good head of steam going. And that is incomplete. From a defensive perspective, they had exactly what you want anytime they want to throw the football. There was pressure on the quarterback. They were getting after him, and they tightened down on the receivers and forced the incompletion. Field goal unit and Joey Sly now. From the right hash, this from an even 40 yards out. And this one is right through. And they will stretch the lead now to 17-3. to so a good kick there to polish off the drive with three points. Yeah, and coaches always talk about finishing a drive with a kick. Two of them give you points, either an extra point, or in this case, a field goal. The Vikings take over first and 10 at their own 25-yard line.
Here are the Vikings now to start their next drive. And what do you think goes on here in this situation? If you got the football, you're trailing, you're back in your own territory. Rush coming, and he's taken down. Now the Vikings will use the second of their timeouts as they'll stop it with 27 seconds remaining here in the second quarter. Got to assume this defense will be charging again here. It's second and 15. Pressure too great, and he goes down once more. The Lions will use the first of their timeouts as it comes with 22 seconds to go here at half number one. Back-to-back -back sacks have this place in a frenzy as they line up again third and long now. They just do get the playoff as he'll look to throw. Oh, going for Jefferson downfield. And that is incomplete. So 17 seconds now on the clock here. The passing game not in sync here early. And now it's fourth down. Sanchez. Out is Rigoberto Sanchez on fourth down to punt this thing. Jamal Agnew is deep to return it. He was only asked to punt once in the victory last week as he sends this one away. 36 yards on the punt with no return. And control of the football, switching hands with very little time remaining until the half. The Lions offense ready to kick off their next drive. And from this spot in the field with the clock where it's at, you think we're just going to see a knee and that's it? And I think in this situation, that's the proper play. But we do know there's some risk takers out there that may want to take one more shot before the clock runs out. Oh, nearly a disaster there on the check down. But they'll get it back. Incomplete. It's second down. So after the incompletion on first, now second and ten. They'll throw now on the final play. Open man is Galladay complete. And they'll work this down to the 40-yard line, tackled there. So we have come to halftime in what's already a two-touchdown game. As we'll send you down the coast now to Orlando, that's where we find Jonathan Coachman ready with our EA Sports halftime report. Coach, the Vikings set to receive the second-half kickoff, and they trail it here as we resume play. And a fair catch signaled for and taken successfully. Here are the Vikings now to start their next drive. These guys had to punt last time. It has not been a very fruitful game offensively thus far. They haven't even made a trip to the red zone. And I know that everyone's going crazy on that sideline because that drives you berserk to come off the field, not really move the ball well. As you said, not even get to the red zone, let alone, you know, not even put points on the board. They got to just take a deep breath, relax, try and figure out what is working, and call more of that. Justin Jefferson. It's a pickup of six. Six yards was the pickup on the last completion, so here's second and four. The throw over the middle taken in, and it's going to be another first down as they'll get him to the ground at the Lions 35. It's a game 17 yards on the pickup there. The drive will continue. It's a first down. They'll look to throw here on first down. He gets this one into the hands of Dalvin Cook. The pass. Give him nine on the play, and that'll make it second and short. A gain of nine. Brings up second and a yard. At 
the 27-yard line. A throw on the quick slant going to be complete. And it's going to be another first down as they'll get him to the ground at the Lions' 12-yard line. A gain of 15. A solid gain of 15 yards. In the... And it's caught in the end zone for the Viking touchdown by Justin Jefferson. Justin Jefferson with another touchdown. Number 24 on the year. And the Vikings are able to make this a close game again. Point after, right down the middle. And that slices the lead down to 17-10. Now after the touchdown, here's Pinheiro to kick it off. And this will be a touchback as that sails over the end line. 25-yard line. The Lions offense ready to kick off their next drive. And their lead cut in half by that touchdown a moment ago. They are up seven as they begin this drive first and ten. And he will lose yardage and be backed up to the 24. Officially, it's a one-yard loss. That's going to bring up second and 11. After the loss to start out, here's second and 11. Now a shotgun snap as they'll look to throw. Completing it to the right side, Johnson. And they get him down, but not before he takes it across the 40-yard line. 17 yards on the catch and run. It's a first down. And they certainly had success throughout this contest getting him the ball in the passing game, and there he picks up another first down. Whatever they saw going into this one, they've been able to capitalize on it, and no adjustment has been made to take it away. And he'll be brought down, losing yardage back at the 40. He'll lose a yard there, and it's second and 11. Second and 11 at the 40-yard line. Second and 11. This will be taken in by Michael Pittman. And he'll be taken down, but not before he works it past the 50. A gain of 13. It's a first down. And a good quarterback facing zone coverage. If he has just a little bit of time to survey the scene, that's what's going to happen. No doubt about it. If there's no pressure, he's going to continue to pick them apart because he'll have all that time to find someone open downfield. You can only cover for so long. So maybe they want to go to a zone blitz scheme, get a little bit more pressure. Remember when Carolina did that against Denver? They lost the game ultimately. They dropped the defensive end out, and he ended up with an interception in that game in Super Bowl 50. Maybe some sort of scheme like that to try and get more pressure at the passer. Second down, here's Jalen Hurts. Being chased out left. Oh, you saw that one coming. It's intercepted, throwing back across his body. Picked off at the 46. And he will take this one home. It's a touchdown. Well, you don't want to coach him, Charles, to stay in the pocket on every play, but I guess that's the danger of getting outside of the pocket, extending a play and making a bad throw. Turns into six points the other way. Yeah, sometimes when you get outside the pocket, your, your vision actually gets obscured a little bit or you narrow it down too much and you don't see all the defenders in the area. 17-17 the score. All even to this point as the kick's away. And they will not get a chance to return this one as it's through the end zone for a touchback. The Lions offense ready to kick off their next drive. And last time, decent field position through the pick six. Obviously costly. But they can't afford to just put the ring down. All right, they, good field position means go ahead and attack on offense. Try and press the advantage a little bit. They just have to be better with the football on this possession. So the last, that didn't bother you too much last time? No, because it's, it's exactly what you're supposed to do. You can't have good field position and not try to take advantage of it. Sometimes the defense makes a good play, too. Second and six, just inside the 30. They keep it on the ground. This time it's Fournette. And he is met at the line of scrimmage, and he goes down right there. No gain on the play there, so they're left with a third down and six. It's third down and six. On third down, he'll drop to throw. He'll take a shot downfield for Pittman. 
He's got it at the 15. My goal. A big play on third down for the Lions. 57 yards. That's a big time pitch and catch right there. And partner, I remember the days when quarterbacks would try this. They were holding their breath. But nowadays, they're counting on their receiver to be just a little bit better than the defensive back when it's one-on-one -on -one and the ball's in the air like that. A real field flipper there as all of a sudden they've got a first down in the red zone. This is Fournette. Trying to bounce it outside, but he's only able to get it back to the line of scrimmage. Right at the line of Call it no gain on the play, and it'll be second down. Second and ten. Third quarter, all tied up. This is second and ten. And he'll get it here to the ten-yard line. He'll get five out of the keeper, but now it's third down. Brandon, all things considered, they have to feel pretty good about getting that type of a gain considering the blitz that they just had against them. A field goal would get him the lead, but that's not what they're shooting for as they come up on third down. They'll let the QB keep it here off the option. On third down, Fournette. And he takes this one in for a Lions touchdown. A 10-yard touchdown run. And the Lions have taken the lead. He's got the hat trick now of rushing touchdowns. Also has his team the advantage. And I'm looking at it two ways here. If I'm on defense, I don't care what they do now. I commit as many people as it takes to slowing him down running the football. Even if they want to hit me over the top on play action, I just don't let him beat me that way anymore. And if I'm him, I'm in the huddle calling the plays myself. I don't care what play call comes in until my quarterback, guess what? You're handing it to me again. And if I'm the quarterback, I'm saying, okay, that sounds good, right? Smart quarterback. Here are the Vikings now to start their next drive. And for them, a touchdown their last go around. Obviously, they'll be hoping to do that again. And when you start plotting for this drive, when you start thinking to yourself, okay, what are we going to do? You don't go away from what you did before because that worked, but you have to be prepared. And for a third time tonight, he's intercepted. Picked up by Keanu Neal. And he'll get this back to the 32-yard line. Boy, so another interception, CD. Uh, it feels like he's starting to unravel a little bit. And as you would expect, still a work in progress here in his second season. He has to start ironing out some of these mistakes, though, because now his head coach, his offensive coaches, they have to evaluate whether you keep playing him, let him work through it, or you start thinking about going to his backup. Eight yards on the pickup, and now they'll have some options on second and short. One quarter remains here in this Thursday night matchup. This is the National Football League on EA Sports. Eight yards the tally on that first down run. Here's second and two. Again, it's Fournette. And he's going to lose yards. They take him down at the 26. Two yards the loss. And now they go from second and two to a tough third and four. Brings up third and four. The Lions on third down. They have been superb. Five for six to this point. This is third and four. And they'll try and run the option to pick it up. And he went nowhere. He'll lose yardage back to the 29. The defense stiffens to force fourth down following that first down gain of eight. And his kick here is good. And that will push the lead up to double digits now at 10. So his second field goal of the game, and that could turn out to be the big one. Yeah, you have to make them score twice to beat you, and that's not impossible. But here in the fourth quarter, puts their backs clearly against the wall. Charles, this one, not over, certainly. But you set the magic number earlier in this game at 20 points. Said that they would need to hold them right around that marker under it. Uh, what, what are you seeing here? Well, that, that number is still in play because we said, okay, 20 or under gives them a chance to win right on pace for being in that range and guess what they've got a shot
Trying to shake off the interception from the last drive. He'll look to throw. But it's caught on the right side. It's Smith. And they work this well upfield across the 45. 23 yards, the final tally. It's a gain of 23 yards. And the Vikings first down. Out of the gun. They'll look to throw. That'll be complete to Cook. And they'll get him down as he's inside the 40. 13 yards as the Vikings pick up the first down. 13 yards. From the shotgun, he'll look to throw. He'll take a shot for the end zone. And oh, it'll be intercepted. Adrian Amos with a pick. And a big turnover there as his guys will get the football back. Charles, whatever's going on between his ears right now, it's just not completely calculated correctly. Seven picks between last week and this week after that one. And they always say the most important part of a player is those six inches between the ears. But right now, it's all those interceptions that are going on. So whoever his trusted confidant is on the sidelines, I don't know if it's the offense coordinator, the quarterback's coach, maybe the backup quarterback, that's who he needs to get with now and get himself calm. From the 26, they'll line up on second and four. He'll get two on the keeper, but it becomes now a third down. But not much on that run, Charles. No, that's exactly the way to execute a run blitz there. They guessed correctly that they would move the ball on the ground, honed in on it, and stopped them. Mark that down for a win in the defense's column. The Lions on third down. They've been very good, five for seven thus far. This time they face a third and two. And they'll go jet sweep to try to pick it up. Oh, a nifty juke there. Not much fun for a guy trying to tackle it. And he is going to have a Lions first down as they're able to get the third down conversion. Excellent play there on third down. Give them 25 yards. From Viking territory now, they'll come up first and 10 at the 47. Now whistles and a flag down. Looked like one of the Lions linemen might have moved. A full start backs him up five. First and 15. And he'll lose yardage on the play back at the 45-yard line. That's going to wind up a loss of a full three yards on first down. Clock continuing to run. They'll probably wind this all the way before snapping it on second down. They'll try and run some clock with Fournette. And he's got it across the midfield stripe and into Viking territory. Give him six on the run. They're going to be faced now with a third and 12. And there's a run to be happy with. Good, solid yardage. He'll take that any time you hand the ball to a back. The Lions on third down. They've hit on six of their eight tries. Very good. This is third down and 12. He'll drop to throw. And he'll get that to Fournette complete. And he'll go down inside the 45 before going out of bounds. Five yards, not enough. And it'll be fourth down. Well, we can make this one pretty simple. Locked up all of his progressions downfield, forced to get it to his running back. But how about the way they ran to the football and knocked him down to force a fourth down? And this is right down the middle as he puts it through. So it's not an NFL record, but it's not far off. That'll go in the books as a 61-yard field goal. And wasn't it weird to see a guy line up for a field goal on the other side of midfield? The ball got halfway there, and you thought, no way is that going to make it. But it just kept carrying and carrying, and he winds up sneaking it right over the bar. Their 25-yard line. Here are the 
Vikings now to start their next drive. And in enemy territory last time through the interception. We'll see what they do on this drive. Can't wait to see how it alters what they decide to do in play calling. Do they continue to throw the ball? Do they want to lean more on the running game? It'll be an interesting sequence of plays that they've got coming up. Does it often affect the play calling with the interception? <laughs> and this is intercepted, and that should do it. Picked up by Keanu Neal. And they finally put an end to this return. But now before he's all the way down to the 37. And you have to wonder, Charles, in a game like this, five interceptions, what does this do to the psyche of a young quarterback? Well, based on the fact that he's still out there and he threw a fifth interception, I'm wondering if his head coach believes that he's really strong mentally and wants him to play through it. Because otherwise, you need to get him out and fight another day because this could leave lasting damage if he keeps throwing interceptions. So the Lions in possession of the football as we welcome you back. And the scoreboard on their side, they're just looking to melt away these final couple of minutes and put this one in the left-hand column. And brought down, but not before they're inside the 25. That one good for a first down pickup of 18 yards. I'd sure love to offer some advice to the defensive coordinator, but his guys are just getting run over by an offense that's executing like a well-oiled machine. Not totally home free yet, but it's looking good as they come up first and 10. Mariota here to throw. Stepping up, he'll try and run. Hit comes, and he lost the football. Mariota had it jarred loose. And the Vikings pick up the football. And a big turnover there as his guys will get the football back. Well, I'm guessing that on the sidelines there might be a few words said about that mistake there, but I don't think it's going to hurt them in the long run. They're still going to get out of here with a win. Yeah, they got the, the two-score cushion, but you know what coaches say? Nowhere to go here. He lost the football. Oh, that's the way to win. And that should just about do it. They return it to the end zone, sealing it with a defensive touchdown. The offense, they've had some sloppy moments. Sloppy there again on that one, and it could be the backbreaker. From a defensive perspective, if the offense is going to be sloppy, you've got to take advantage of that, and that's what they've done all game long. And he will get into the end zone to extend the lead by two more. So a big play there, not only the fumble return for the touchdown, then they get the two-point try. And you know, for the defense, though, they were just over there sitting on the field. They had to rush out to try to defend that. You know, it's funny. They actually practice situations that they call sudden change when the team turns it over. I guarantee you no one practices a fumble return for a touchdown like that. And now someone goes for two. Really good strategy by them putting them in that situation. In this position, trying to get back into the game, teams are looking for a spark from their special teams. That's not what they got, though. They got a setback, and they have a long field to cover. They want to try and put points on the board. They'll come out throwing here to start the drive. And nearly intercepted. That would have been a hat trick, his third pick of the game. Instead, second down. Complete. Coverage by Keanu Neal. The play action fake. They'll look to throw. Nowhere to go here. He lost the football. Dangerous spot for them to cough it up. Lucky to have recovered because had the defense got it, they were already within a shadow of the goal post. And then you're yelling at your own defense. Sudden change, sudden change. That's not what you want to hear on your sideline. That means you got to run out there and try and stop an offense who has the ball in a very advantageous position. Out of the gun now on third down. And the throw there going to be incomplete. That's an excellent job right there on third down. Like any defense, you never want to let them get anything started. And that would have been a first down. Instead, you saw the contact on time, no penalty. And before this drive could get wings, it's fourth down. Now a desperation throw deep downfield. And now here is another interception. Adrian Amos with a pick. And his guys are going to get the football at the 37-yard line. Gosh, you add up last week and this week now. That's nine interceptions in this two-game stretch, and we're not done here. It's almost as if they can't even believe their eyes. 
or maybe, partner, is the confidence level in him so high that they believe he'll get out of it and make plays for them to win a game. Well, they've said they believe in him. That's being tested right here. Officially, it's a one-yard loss. That's going to bring up second and 11. Brings up second and 11. Off the play fake. Here's Hurts. Throwing deep for Galladay. This is intercepted. Picked off at the 20. And he's going to go down as time has now run out on this game. Let's go! Let's go! Tonight, Charles, we saw a lot of points go up in this one. Certainly defensively, stuff that they could look at on film, don't you think? No doubt about it. And they've got to go back and check where the errors are, how they're going to fix them, and continue to get better at what they do. But they also need a little adjustment with their confidence. To give up that many points, even if you win a game, that can hurt you. So for the home team here, they continue to make their case for the playoffs as they move to 9-3. and three. And now they'll get the weekend off as they get a little extra time to prepare to face the Houston Texans. Meanwhile, for the Vikings, it's a tough one to swallow as they drop back to 8-4 and four on the year. And they'll try to make amends next week as they host the New Orleans Saints. So for our entire crew, alongside Charles Davis, I'm Brandon Gordon. Thanks for watching, everybody. We'll see you next time.